In a prior quick tip, Brian shared with you how to properly support your nuts, a crucial topic. See, here at AGM, we love having those hard-hitting conversations because you never know, one day, they could save your life. Isn't that a bit dramatic, Kyle? Okay, maybe talking about nuts won't save your life, but it could save your race or your weekend. Although the manufacturer uses okay hardware with nylock nuts, the nylock doesn't have enough grip strength to hold it from coming loose. We all know that loose nuts causes premature wear and failure. I highly suggest doing a nut and bolt check after every weekend or two of riding. It's quite scary how loose hardware can get after a few hundred miles of off-roading. A good rule is to torque all the nuts and bolts that touch a suspension or steering component because a failure here can result in a part literally falling off the car. Hopefully nobody gets hurt and you have an AGM electric jack on board to get back on all four wheels. As smart as Can-Am Kill F484 and the rest of the keyboard warriors sound on the forums, he probably didn't engineer the part you're working on. So the factory manual works best for finding torque specs. A quick Google search will find most manufacturer's manuals on the interwebs free of charge. On to the work. If you're working in your garage, use a floor jack to jack the car up by the frame getting a corner off the ground. Use a jack stand to slide underneath to make sure the car is nice and secure and pull the wheel and tire. If you have access to a lift, get the car up in the air, get all four wheels off at once and get to work. It's a huge time saver. Once you have a wheel or the wheels off, the next thing you're gonna need is wrenches, sockets, and a torque wrench. I'm sure you have a very calibrated elbow and four Ugga Duggas is exactly 74.6 foot pounds, but just grab a torque wrench, make your life easy. Quick side note, anytime you're torquing hardware, you always wanna torque from the nut side. This will alleviate any bolt twist and give you a more accurate torque. When it comes to actually going through the sequence of torquing the car, I found that most manufacturers have three to four common sizes touching the suspension and steering components. I generally start with the largest first and then work my way down. Once you have a nut and bolt torqued, I like to use a Sharpie, torque seal, or some sort of paint pen to mark that the job is done. This also helps when you're on the trail, you can take a quick glance at the car and see if any of your hardware is coming loose. Then drop down to each additional size, torquing all the related hardware. And remember, torque from the nut side when possible. Look at that bicep. Once you have torqued all your hardware front to back, back to front, side to side, and it's all marked and you're happy with the job, throw your wheels back on, remembering to torque them to proper spec, load it on the trailer, go have fun. Not only does this process make your nuts tighter than a banker's wallet on the first night in prison, but it also allows you to inspect the area that you're working on. You can check for worn bushings, cracked frame, worn out ball joints, stuff like that to make sure that you're not gonna prematurely break on the trail. And that's it. I hope this quick tip helps. And if you have any additions that you wanna add in, please drop it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>